Hi everybody, Steve Chittenden here from SAP. I often get asked, why do we have all these different solutions and how do they all work together? And one of the common questions I get asked is, where does Ariba fit within the S4 world? And what about our other solutions as well? Where do they fit within the supply chain world and things like that? So what we're gonna look at today is a little bit about how those different solutions actually work together. So first of all, let's talk about Ariba a little bit. Ariba is our uh, procurement platform. It has spend analysis to tell us what we're spending our money on and how we're doing that. We've got sourcing going out to our vendors to make sure we get the right prices on our products that we're sourcing, turning those sourcing events into contracts to ensure that we have compliance and we can use catalog to drive compliance within the organization as well, and supply lifecycle performance allowing us to look at what our vendors are actually doing and risk taking external feeds and actually seeing, do we have any risks associated to our vendors or suppliers? Now, of course, the real power of all this is the actual Ariba network itself. Millions of vendors on the network all collaborating together with millions of customers. And part of that, of course, is the supply chain collaboration. How do we collaborate across purchase orders, forecasting, and all those different elements that we need for the supply chain. So how do these, all these different things work together? Well, let's break it down and make it nice and simple. And one of the simplest things I always think of is a, a caveman. So a caveman is very, very basic. So let's break it down to those components. Here we've got a caveman and he needs to be able to live. He needs to be able to function, to operate and actually exist in the world. And what he needs to do that is he needs his core system. And that's where SAP S4HANA comes in. It holds all the basic data. It's the system of record. It holds everything in there in terms of the contracts, the purchase orders, all those good things, and it's operating day to day. So we need to be able to run that well and run it as healthily as possible. And that's where SAP, Ariba, SAP HANA comes in, S4HANA, excuse me. So, but that's not all. He needs to be able to think. He needs to be able to make decisions, do what if analysis, do planning, what am I going to do next? Where am I going to find resources? And that's where he needs his brain. This is where SAP IVP comes in, allowing us to get a wider vision of just what's happening in terms of myself, being able to make decisions about that, to plan for future events, and actually drive my business forward. In this case, drive my caveman forward. But as well as myself, my own internal operations, I also have external risks, external feeds, and everything happening outside. So this is where we need to have insights, vision, and be able to detect what's happening externally. And this is where SAP Leonardo comes in, taking our devices, our sensors, and everything that's happening in our, uh, sometimes in our own organization, but of course, often across multiple organizations, such as couriers with trucks, uh, device sensors in manufacturing, all those different elements, and bringing them together to give me my insight. How do I actually see better in terms of what's going on? But no caveman is successful on their own. And often what we need to do is look to others for innovation, for ideas, for new products, and of course, to supply us with the things that we need. So as our suppliers arrive, we need to be able to communicate and talk to them and actually deal with our suppliers correctly. So we need to have collaboration, we need to have that external visibility of what's going on and to build our network. So this is where SAP Ariba comes in, giving us our voice to actually be able to talk and listen and communicate and collaborate with our suppliers across the network. So that's how all these different elements essentially work together. We need the core, we need to have it working well, we need to do it in the best way possible and always checking that everything's okay. We need to do that thinking element. That's where IBP comes in and decision-making and visibility across everything. Leonardo taking those feeds from external sources, making sense of them and actually feeding that to our brain and IBP. And of course, the Reba network out there with all our vendors and suppliers collaborating with them. Where are our things? How do we get them in the best way? And all of this coming into the core so that we can actually see what's going on. So let's have a look at that in an actual system. So if I'm just gonna Bear with me one second. So here we've got SAP S4. Uh, just refresh that screen very quickly. And you can see here we've got the nice Fiori user interface. 
and I want to see what's actually happening in my world. So what I might do is, as a purchaser, for instance, I may take a look, take a look at some purchasing analytics. So here I can see all my contracts where I've collaborated with my uh, suppliers, maybe through the Ariba network, and I've also got my purchase orders. I can see I'm doing very well on my contract leakage, which means my spend is under control. Uh, I've got some overdue items in my purchasing. So the heart and lung looks okay. I've got a few issues here and there, but um, the general driving of the business looks all right. So let's have a look at going a little bit external. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a purchase requisition. And when I do this, I'm going to collaborate with one of my vendors and ensure that I'm compliant by using an actual catalog. So I could punch out to an actual supplier catalog, or in this case, I'm just going to go to my general Ariba catalog and have a look at all items in there. So now I'm talking to my external sources. I'm collaborating with my vendors to see what's actually out there. Now, these catalogs, of course, could have come from a contract. So they could have come from a catalog being managed by the vendors or internally. It really depends on how we set that up. So here I can see some of my external vendors um, or very easily I could go into those different uh, areas and, and uh, browse by them but also very easily I can simply search at the top here so let's say I need to purchase an iPhone very very basic uh, example here there's my iPhone I'm happy with it of course I could click on this go into more detail but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm just going to quickly add that to the cart and when that's added to the cart I'll say yes I'm happy with that and then I'm going to check it out because I'm happy with that particular item. Now, of course, if this was a direct material, the purchase order would have been created through an MRP type process instead. But in this case, I'm actually creating an indirect purchase requisition and purchase order. Now, what's going to happen there is I click on now order and that's going to generate my purchase requisition. And in this case, I've skipped the actual approval process, which may happen also in here. Uh, and I'm going straight to create a purchase order very much. So the purchase requisition is created. Off the back of that, that will generate a purchase order. So therefore, I can actually see what's happening in the system. So if I wanted to, I could go back to my purchase requisitions here and see those. If I wanted to see it in an analytical view, I could use a tile to see how many purchase requisitions are open and all those good things. It really just depends on how you actually want to drive it in the system. So here's my uh, purchase requisition. I can see it's been approved because I set it up that way to approve automatically. Uh, and if I go into this, I'll be able to see it's got a purchase order, so on and so forth. So what's happening with this is at the same time as the purchase order is being created, I'm starting to collaborate and actually go to my outside sources. And this is where the network comes in. So I'm now logged in as a vendor to the system. And I can immediately see as a vendor using the Reba network, my purchase orders, any outstanding invoices, and those various things as well. I can also see that I've got some new purchase orders coming from the system here, which I may need to do something about. As well as this dashboard view, if I want to, I can also click on my inbox and see everything that's coming in from all my different customers all around the world. And if I want to now, I can collaborate with those customers by taking one of my purchase orders. And here I can choose to do a number of things. So I can see, OK, here's the item. It's my iPhone uh, that I created earlier, the purchase orders in the system. So what I might want to do is tell my customer, that, yes, I can actually fulfill that order. And I can confirm that order by clicking on confirm. I can give it some information about what it is that I'm confirming, tell it when it's expected to arrive, all those good things that we want to do in the system, and then send that confirmation back. Now, what's going to happen there in the S4 system is the confirmation will be added to the purchase order to confirm that we're actually OK. And of course, if I'm looking at my S4 analytics, I'll be able to see which of my purchase orders are confirmed or not confirmed and those types of things. But what I also want to do, however, is as a customer, now I've confirmed it, sorry, excuse me, as a vendor, I want to now ship that item to my customer. So I go into my purchase order and create my shipping notification. Click on create shipping notification, give it my ID, everything I need. Here I can add, if I wish, my carrier name, my service level. If I add a carrier, then we start to add some of the tracking data. And of course, SAP Leonardo can then take that tracking data and feed that through to me as well. I can give it my actual shipping date, my expected delivery date, 
and this will start updating the purchase order in the S4 system when I send it. If I have any uh, batch ID, production dates, expiry dates, very useful for raw materials, direct materials, those types of things. And for our smaller vendors, they can also add in here packing instructions and print the SSCC labels, which is a great advantage because as the products arrive at my customer, my customer can then simply scan them straight in and it's got their the customer, that is, details in terms of product numbers, codes and everything else. So a big advantage. Now, obviously, I'm doing this very manually here as a, as a vendor submitting my ASN into the system to go through to uh, S4. But if I was a larger vendor, I may actually be doing this from my own uh, ERP system, whether that be S4 or any other. So as I actually ship the goods, I can actually see them being shipped. But the actual send of the ASN, I wouldn't use the network as such in terms of this user front end. It would simply send a message to the network for it to go through. So ultimately, what happens there is the purchase order will be confirmed. It will also have an inbound delivery generated against it. So when the goods receive, are physically received, we can then, of course, receive them in the system. And the next step to that is once I've actually confirmed the goods receipt in here, the network itself will be updated to let the vendor know that everything's actually been received and the update will happen here. And then finally, I can come in here and I can actually invoice this. So I can create the invoice. And that will, of course, once this is posted, so it'll just take me a few moments to enter this. Just give me one second here. Once this is entered, all my invoicing information will go through. And I can go next and just send that through there. What will happen next is my purchase order in S4 will then be updated, not only with the inbound delivery, but of course the invoice will happen. And the great thing about this and where this is really important, of course, is because I'm using the Ariba network, all the information flowing to S4 is managed by that network. Not only the information, but also the process in which we follow. For instance, if I was to look at one of my other purchase orders, Notice here we've got the idea of confirming, create invoices, send ASNs, all these buttons across the top here. Within the Ariba network, I can control, as a Ariba network buyer, what process is actually followed by my suppliers. For instance, don't send me an ASN unless you've confirmed. You must try and confirm in a certain date. All those elements. Don't try and invoice me until I've done the goods receipt in my S4 system. So all those elements are controlled, and the policeman of that, of course, is the Ariba network itself. So that was just a quick demonstration on how we would actually use both S4 and, of course, going out and collaborating with one of my vendors out here. We haven't really covered the IBP in that session. We'll, we'll cover that in another session. It's a wide topic. Hopefully, everything goes to plan. My caveman evolves into a nice, successful, modern person. So, just to recap, some different scenarios that we may go through using S4 and Ariba. So, if we're doing strategic sourcing, we can do the sourcing in Ariba, contracts created, and our operational work, as we saw, actually happens in S4, punching out to that catalogue. Other elements, if we have an unsourced requisition, we can simply create a requisition in S4, pass that through to Ariba for the sourcing to happen, award it, and as in award it to a particular vendor, that will either generate a purchase order or a contract if we're going to use that particular item on a regular basis. We also have the option of what we call guided buying. Guided buying is an easy to use front end which is external to S4. If your users are not S4 users and they don't need to be in the system apart from the occasional purchasing, they can use guided buying instead. The idea, of course, is the catalogue is still happening there. And of course, that purchase order or purchase requisition is actually happening in S4 as part of the core system, which is what we want. And again, the supplier collaboration still happens and all the goods invoicing, uh, goods receiving and invoicing, of course, happens here in S4. Another way of doing it is the one I showed you, the requisition through the managed catalog, requisition in S4 through a managed catalogue. PO happens in S4, supplier collaboration, and then we've got the goods receipt and invoicing, of course, happening in S4 as well. And there are many variations on this theme, such as project orders, uh, think that's like work orders in project, so on and so forth. 
Same thing for uh, service entry, assets, everything can happen in the same way. It's a combination of S4 and Ariba working together. So, a little bit on, uh, just to finish that section, a little bit on IBP. IBP is obviously the brain of uh, our business planning. It's what we can do for modeling, planning, doing what if analysis, but future states, what we want to do as well is to start bringing in our machine learning as well and sending all these different elements through to our business network, which is Ariba. So in a nutshell, we have obviously the core system and we have our edge products around the side, some of these being Ariba, Hybris for customers, so on and so forth. Finally, just one extra thing to add is as well as purchase order information, through the Ariba network, we can also send forecasting and have commitment to that forecast from our suppliers. We can do obviously what I showed you there, the purchase order confirmation, advanced shipping notification and all those elements. We have schedule agreements, we have component uh, manufacturing, so we can actually do subcontractor manufacturing, uh, all of those good things, sending components, receipting externally, and of course quality and consignment stock are part of this as well. So lots and lots of different messages all happening in the network and, of course, all going into our core system uh, for our make, making sure our system of records working correctly. So Ariba is our single source of truth, simple user interface for our suppliers, the supplier network there having that information and bringing that through ultimately to S4 so that we can actually run our procurement processes in the best way possible, allowing us to source analyze the data, take those contracts in, purchase, receive, and invoice, all through SAP Ariba and using S4 as our core system. Thanks very much for your time.